Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? Today we talk about how virtual reality has played a major role in music entertainment, as well as the recap of Lost Horizon that took place in Sensar. Let's go! If you're new to the VR Essentials channel, welcome to you. Consider subscribing as every week we upload videos about the practical uses of VR. And if you've come here before, welcome back. It's awesome to see you again. My name is Lazius K. That's right, you heard it. Virtual reality has been taken over by the music entertainment industry, which is fantastic news for the industry as a whole. The battle is on as there are several different platforms which event organizers and producers can benefit from. Last week, there was the Jean-Michel Jean concert attracting more than 600,000 people to the live stream. Another social media VR platform called Wave VR organized the John Legend concert, although apparently it may have been pre-recorded, but either way, great to know that that platform can also be used to create really cool entertainment experiences. Let's focus more on the Lost Horizon event. Sensar was developed about five years ago by Linden Labs, who also developed Second Life, which was one of the world's most popular and first virtual reality social platforms on the web. It was then bought this year in March by Wiki Projects, who are trying to focus and take the direction of Sensar into being an official platform for music entertainment purposes. Wiki Project, which then worked with Shangri-La, and Shangri-La are basically the organizers of one of the world's most popular festivals called Glastonbury Festival, which occurs every single year in the UK. But this year, of course, due to COVID-19, they had to postpone it, so they went online using virtual reality instead. The festival, which took place this weekend for an entire two days, had an amazing lineup, including Alan Fitzpatrick, Archie Hamilton, Sasha, Fatboy Slim, Carl Cox, and so many more. You can currently download Sensor from their website or directly from Steam and is only available to those who have access to PC VR. So if you have the Oculus Quest, you're gonna need the Oculus Link to patch up to your computer. Similarly to VR Chat, Samsung will provide you the ability to create avatars which are super eccentric and really will let your imagination run wild. The main theme of the festival was urban and street art, which is reminiscent of the direction in which they're trying to take. They had four main rooms. One of them was called Show TV, which was actually a television production set where you can basically sit in the stage and then watch some documentaries about the stories of the organizers and also interviews that they had conducted with various different people. However, the live action took place in three other rooms. One of them was called Gas Tower, where they have some live band performances, which really kicked ass. And then they also had Freedom and Nomad, where you could basically hear some house music, trance and other electronic performances. What I really liked about Sensor and that is quite comparatively different to other platforms at the moment is the look and feel of the actual platform. Most of everything is actually quite hyper realistic so when you're inside a Sensor you really actually will feel like you're actually there with real people surrounding you. I would say that 90% of the people inside a Sensor were a mix of between PC users, which means that people were using the platform using their computer and not a VR headset, as well as bots which were pre-programmed to dance within the world. When you use Sensor, there's a tool that you can use called Emote, which basically enables you to choose a different dance style. And then if you're in VR, you'll see your avatar, which mine was the big duck head on the body, and you'll be able to see it from a third person point of view. Personally, I was really impressed how they had actually put everything together, the surface shading and all the materials that were used on top of the, all the modeling was so well done and really made you feel like you're actually in a real concert place. The stage was magnificent. They'd also use some green screen behind the performer to change the backdrop so you can actually see some real cool things going on. For example, some splashes of fire and certain kind of elements of light that would appear. I mean, it was just really well done. The main goal of the festival was clearly to try and make the experience as real as they possibly could and also bring the fans as close as possible to the actual performers. And the way they had actually done that was take the performers and record them playing behind a green screen then project their performance on a transparent screen inside of Sensor on the stage. So it actually made you feel as if they were really there and you were standing meters away 
from them. It was quite clear to me, although I cannot confirm this, that most of all the performances were pre-recorded. There is also a shop available where you could actually either decide to wear the free t-shirt of Lost Horizon or you could actually buy some of the merchandise directly from Sensar and then when you clicked on something it would basically come up with a pop-up, it would show you the item with the description and also the price and then part of the proceeds went to basically a charitable cause. The lighting inside of each world was sublime. There were so many different effects from the laser shows, the strom shows, the fire effects, the tungsten and also all the fog and volumetrics that went into it and it didn't cause any lagging which I was really amazed with. There was also a really cool Shangri-La art room which you could go inside and check out all types of different illustrations which were submitted to the organizers for the show. So it's safe to say that the Wookiee project's vision is definitely a success and if they carry on they're definitely going to enable Sensor to become perhaps the next generation of music entertainment in virtual reality. And of course, why not? You could animate some bots to go along with a live performance, or even if you're gonna animate your key talent, you could then do a live voice performance. So either way, it doesn't really matter because what really matters is the experience for people to be able to be as close as possible to the star that they idolize or the music that they love the most. Also, let's not forget that brands will save tons of money by hiring a development team to build the world inside of virtual reality and then use social media as the platform to promote those entertainment performances. I wish to thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you found it helpful. Remember to hit the like and subscribe. Share some love so that you and I together we can grow the community and help as many people in VR. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. All right, until next time, take it easy. And as always, DJ, take it away.